Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our live show. I'm Alvin King, and welcome to He Said, He Said, He Said, a look at the world from a seasoned Black man's perspective. It is Friday, April the 19th, and if you're like me, you turned your heat on in D.C. this evening, because I tell you, the temperature went from 65 degrees to 50 degrees in like a snap. But I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, let me see what, what, what's going on. Okay, we've been telling you for the whole month of April that there have been things that have been going on, so I'm going to share them with you again. Uh, it is Jazz Appreciation Month. It is Autism Awareness Month. It is Stress Awareness Month. And today, it is National Cannabis Festival weekend here in D.C. For those of you who partake in cannabis and wanted to know how to get it, grow it, take it, use it, there's a huge festival at the RFK Stadium, ladies and gentlemen, that um, they have bands and all that stuff that's going on. So if you get a chance to go over there, have fun if you're in D.C. And last but not least, it is National Poetry Month, and we have been having such a good time uh, honoring National Poetry Month, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, as you saw a couple of weeks ago, you know, Vosh presented his poem and I, I presented a poem last week and we're just so excited about sharing all that and all of us with you. Um, our show tonight, it is another Let's Get Newsy, ladies and gentlemen. And we have a special, uh, we see you uh, this, uh, this week tonight the award-winning author, Zaylor Stout, he's stopping by to talk about the National Center for Public Policy Research's attempt to interfere with employee and corporate donations for the LGBTQIA plus nonprofits and so much more, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you, need to be, you need to hear about that um, because it is affecting us and Zaylor is back with us to talk about that tonight. It has been also a huge week for women's basketball. And this past Monday, um, the Starfield 2024 WNBA draft um, kicked off in style as the Indiana Fever selected Iowa superstar and back-to-back -back Naismith Player of the Year, Caitlin Clark, as the number one overall draft pick. And there were some others who we need to uh, give credit to. The Nate Smith Defensive Player of the Year, Cameron Brink, was the number two pick. And she's heading south uh, from Stanford to Los Angeles to join the Sparks. Cameron will team up with Rakia Jackson from Tennessee, whom the Sparks added um, to their second lottery pick at number four overall. The SEC Championship game was headlined by the post-battle between Camilla Cardoza and Angel Reese, who is truly a goddess. I mean, she is so beautiful. Um, and now, just a week later, the two stars are teammates after the Chicago Sky selected them at number three and seven as their picks. And last but not least, um, in the first round, the Dallas Wings took Ohio State's J.C. Sheldon with uh, the number five overall, overall pick, while UConn forward Alea Edwards was selected sixth by the Washington Mystics right here in D.C., be becoming the 27th Husky to be selected in the first round of the WNBA draft. I'm telling you, women's basketball is about to make money like we've never seen it before, and kudos to them. Congratulations to all these incredible women uh, living out their dreams, ladies and gentlemen, because they really are. And talk about living out dreams. 98 days from today, the 2024 Paris Summer Olympics, they will begin, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, I just want to take this moment to salute the all-Black male basketball team, ladies and gentlemen, for this year, uh, coached by Stephen Kerr from the Golden State Warriors. I mean, this is a star-studded team. They won gold before, but this year we have LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Stephon Carey, uh, Joel Embiid, uh, Anthony uh, Davis, Jason Tatum, and Devin Booker, just to name a few. It's 12 of them. And I think I feel another gold 
metal coming down the pike. How about you? How about you? Um, excited about everything that's going on in sports, ladies and gentlemen, and so happy to share that with you. But speaking of gold, I can't do what I do without these two members of my team, ladies and gentlemen. So if we can, let's get on with the chat. Hey, guys. How y'all doing? Good. How y'all doing? Oh, look, look. What, Blue, baby, we haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. Welcome back, Blue. Thank, thank who you. That? For, Blue, who that? That's Blue. Uh, Blue, Robert Blue Baby. Haven't seen yeah, you in a couple Blue. of weeks. So welcome back, Thanks, Gregory. Bro. Thank you for joining us tonight. How you guys doing? I met who that? <laughs> who that? Who that? Who? Oh, that. <laughs> you know what? That's hey, right. That's right. Like, Bobby, welcome, back. Back. welcome back, Bobby. People were deeply, people were deeply uh, concerned about you not being here last week. Do you and I appreciate that, Bosh. You were very serious. I literally, when Alvin announced that I had an emergency last week, people started texting me and calling. So, so I really, really do appreciate uh, everyone's concern. I'm fine. It was one of those, I couldn't make it up situations where a valet parked my car at a Marriott in a very nice section of Washington, DC. And believe it or not, they lost my car keys. I literally could not move. So, but I'm back. So it's good to see everybody. And I really sincerely appreciate everybody's concern. Well, the facelift looks good. I like it. I like it. <laughs> psych, ladies and gentlemen, psych, psych. He's, he's cute normally. But well, w welcome back, Bobby. We, we definitely miss, missed you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. It's good to be back. Week. It's good. I and, missed you guys uh, as well. But I did watch the show when I got home. <laughs> good, good. That makes one. Per no, I take that back. No, I want to shout out. We're talking about the screen size, but that's a whole other thing. But oh. he's always bigger. Oh, <laughs> I don't know where you you pointing to Bobby. You point where you pointing to Bobby? Aren't oh. am I pointing to you? You're pointing. No, you pointing to Bobby. See, when I look at my screen now, I'm pointing to Bobby. I have to switch it around. Okay, so okay. it's backwards, is what you're saying. Let me do that right now. You guys will watch <laughs> well, the magic of you guys. You know, yeah. when, when when we do the chat, ladies and gentlemen, we 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 definitely, you know, we 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 come here and we we talk a lot during the week and we share a lot. And I asked Bobby and Vosh, could I share something that happened to me about two months ago? And I just want to share real quickly with you all, and please you all can weigh in if if you like. But um it's really the whole premise of me wanting to share this is that you just never know how what how people are thinking. You know what I'm saying? And so I was having a conversation. I have this beautiful 92 year old aunt who I love. I adore her. And I went to visit her and I'm sitting in, in her in her kitchen and her grandson is there who's about 40 years old, you know, I, I know, you know, I, I know him. Um, he's one of the family members that says, you know what, I'm not getting the vaccine. I'm not doing this. COVID is, is a conspiracy and all that. Uh, but I love him. You know what I'm saying? That, that's just who he is, you know? And um, so I don't know how we got on the subject, but I was talking to my aunt about Beyonce. And so I, she was like, oh, okay, Beyonce. And then we ventured off into another conversation about Beyonce. And I just said, and we started talking about her husband. And I said, oh yeah, Jay-Z is her, 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 her husband. And my cousin, he said, well, wait a minute, he got all up in arms. Well, why you got to connect, you know, Beyonce with Jay-Z? Can't he stand on his own? He's a billionaire. He's, he's, you know, he's done everything. Da, da, da. And I was like, well, I was just trying to get my 92-year aunt, 92-year-old aunt to relate. So then my aunt said, in the same kind of context, how is your godson? And I said, you know, I have a godson who, you know, he's he's growing, teenager. And I said, well, he's doing good, you know. I said, but you know, he's having some challenges. And I said, but his dads are working through it. And my cousin said, Well, that's why he's having a problem because he has two dads. That's not normal. And I just looked and I, I looked at him and I, I said, um, so are you saying that a child can't grow up in a gay home and be successful? Or I said, because I don't know what normal is or can't be, 
can, can grow up with and not have any issues or and he said he stopped me and said no he said you know he said that you know it, it just can't happen i just that's why he's probably acting up or having problems mm -hmm. and i said i sat there and i said okay alvin don't let your anger management go too far left yeah and i looked at him and i said well you know jay-z that guy who you just said is a billionaire and can do no wrong can hurt anybody I said, his mother just married a woman and she raised him from the streets through whatever he had to raise him through a single parent home mm -hmm. for him to become a multi-million, almost billion dollar mogul. What do you have to say to that? And he just looked and he said, well, she wasn't always gay. And then I just said, okay, I can't talk to you. Wow. So I want to share that with you because it was a moment where I just thought, let me teach him because I, my point was already made when I shared my issue about, or my point about Jay-Z, it was made. But for him to say, and there are people out there who think that a child cannot be raised properly, mm -hmm. a, a homosexual or a gay home is just ridiculous to me, but they're out there. I just didn't think it was so close to me because mm -hmm. I'm openly gay. I'm, 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 Every, you know, my whole family knows, but I don't have kids. So I guess he couldn't say that to me. That would have been a conversation. Wow. So your thoughts. It's disheartening. It's we are in a time when <clears throat> we have had generations of people who have been raised by gay parents. Mm -hmm. The facts are out there. So when someone tries to pull their opinions out of the atmosphere, to support their bigoted positions, it just shows that they're not trying to be educated. They're not trying to learn or to see what reality is. Gay people have been raising kids for forever, whether they have been out or not. Those gay kids have grown up and said, I've loved my gay parents. And I would say probably a fewer percentage than the normal of kids who grow up in heterosexual environments who hate their parents, I would say that we probably are doing a better job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, bigotry is always going to find the soil in which it can dig its roots. And it's and it's even more, I think, pronounced when it's rooted in such a level of, and I say this with, with all due respect um, and the truest meaning of the word, it's rooted in ignorance. It's rooted in a lack of knowledge and factual uh, evidence and uh, information. And that is what I find to be sometimes very difficult in terms of really being able to engage with people when they're not willing to embrace and accept um, factual truth. Um, I think when you and I first uh, were talking about it, we talked about the, the whole notion that, you know, as three gay men uh, raised in households of heterosexual parents, like that that notion that whoever is raising the child then pretty much dictates the identity of the child um, is not based in any kind of factual evidence. And we are living proof of that. No, nothing, nothing. This is not the only topic that the information that people are getting comes from institutions that are not known for basing their perceptions of the world on reality and facts. Yes. So uh, there's a lot to combat. And I wanna point out that Blue said, uh, and fellas, we're doing a better job taking care of our aging parents. And I personally get to say, hell yeah, to that. Mm -hmm. So the cycle of life and family and the care, et cetera, Gay, gay kids are integral to the happiness of many, many families that choose to embrace us. And, and one more point that I just want to add, and I also want to add that my cousin, he's a father. And it, it kind of, you know, when he, when he said it, I thought about his, you know, his son. And I thought, mm. wow, you know, that, that level of ignorance can mm. pour down into your, into your son. Who, who was a very good kid. You know, he's a good, well, he's not a kid, he's 21 years old. But his, his son is a really, you know, nice, nice kid 
But the fact that he think, thought that way, it with every how I see him and how he's come across, that just shocked me. It was almost like putting a cherry on top of a cake. But I, I thank you all for, for letting me share that with you. Thank you, uh, viewers, for, you know, for your comments. Rodney uh, Bryant said, but then some folks embrace um, ignorance because it's their comfort zone. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And thank you, uh, uh, Raw Health. I, I was truly composed because I really wanted to come out my seat. But since he gave me ammunition, I tend when if I shoot an arrow, I'm going to hit bull bullseye. So he gave me that opportunity. But thank you all. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, this month, as I said, is National Poetry Month. Mm -hmm. And we have the distinct opportunity to let our fellow co-host, Bobby, take the stage and share one of his favorite poems with us and tell us why he selected this particular piece. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, my brothers, thank you. Um, this poem is one that was gifted to me by a very dear friend, my buddy Lamont, uh, many years ago, and uh, it's hung in my home, and I literally took it down, it's framed, uh, because I wanted to share it with you. It's called Brothers Loving Brothers. Respect yourself, my brother, for we are so many wondrous things. Like a black rose, you are a rarity to be found. Our leaves intertwine as I reach out to you and the release of a gentle rain. Your precious gem, black pearl that warms the heart, symbol of ageless wisdom, I derive strength from the touch of your hand. Our lives blend together like rays of light. We are men of color adorned in shades of tan, red, beige, black, and brown. Brothers born from the same earth womb, brothers reaching from the same star. Love me as your equal. Love me brother to brother. Lloyd Vega is the author of Brothers Loving Brothers. Thank you, Brother Bobby, for reading that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate it, ladies and gentlemen. We we are enjoying this this uh, month of reading poems and sharing them with you all. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you, Bobby. And I have one last ask, ladies and gentlemen. Next week, is it next week is the end of uh, April, correct? Correct. Next week is the end of April. And for our mm. April 26th show, what I'd like to do is have one of our viewers to come on and read your favorite poem. We would like for you to do that. And I, I know you, I see you all. I'm going to reach out to some of, I see some of you all on here. But we want you to come on. Take, take about, you know, uh, two minutes to read your favorite poem. I would like that. And this is what, what you need to do. Please go to our Facebook page if you can and just go in the comment section and you need to tell us who is the oldest and the youngest. Put the names in order of the three of us, okay? Put <laughs> you put the three of us. Put you can say the put the three of us and we're going to look at that whoever gets it right. That's what we're, we're going to call you. Please go to our Facebook page and put who are the oldest to the youngest. Start with the top and go to the bottom. And for those of you who already know that I'm the youngest, you can't do it. But go ahead and do that, and and we will we will we will we would love to have you on. Seriously, we would love to have our viewers participate in that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And just remember, when you go to the Facebook page, we will know who you are. So my <laughs> friends better get this right. <laughs> well, I mean, can they go to any of our social media? Can they go to our Instagram? Please, uh, please Facebook, watch. Yes, YouTube. But I, I don't know, know if our people. age is there. Uh, no, no, that wouldn't be apparent, but like in terms of communicating with us, because I know like yeah. Oral, oh, yeah. Oral Health yeah. is on YouTube. Yeah. A yeah. lot of our viewers that we get live come from Twitter. Got it. Okay. Um, they're through the Black Press Twitter, and then yeah. we've got our Instagram. So yeah. anywhere you can find He Said, He Said, He Said live, or the Black Press, really. Yeah. Go ahead and put the comments in, tag He Said, He Said, He Said live. Mm -hmm. um, because we are on those different platforms and yep. we will get that and we will find out. And Alvin, don't be trying to like put people who are lying and saying that you're the youngest because it has to be factual. I'm not saying a word. 
You shouldn't. And okay. I, I moisturize. So I'm I moisturized. So but. Thank, thank you all. We, we look forward to having you on the show next week. I would love to. And that'll <laughs> give us a chance to meet you. But no, it would, it would be great if you do that again. Just put our names. It could be Vosh, Alvin, Bobby, Bobby, <laughs> Alvin, Vosh. Alvin, you know, or you know, it it could be whatever, but just just put it in but order. Oldest at the top. Oh. Was, right? <laughs> oh, he no, was no. reading them. He was no. reading them. Did you see that? He was like, "Bosh." I know. I know. <laughs> but but for their guesses, the oldest is at the top, right? And the youngest is at the bottom. Yes. So I, yes. Never wanted to put that. Okay. Yeah. So welcome again to our Let's Get Newsy show, ladies and gentlemen. So we're gonna get on <laughs> with it. So. Okay, okay, let, let, let's let's take it away because there's so much happening. We don't oh, we can't yes. there's so much happening. It's, 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 I mean, truly. So one of the biggest stories still continues to be that Trump is on trial. I have a feeling that's going to continue throughout the rest of the year. But he is facing 34 counts of falsifying business records related to his reimbursement of Michael Cohen for hush money payments to adult film actress Stormy Daniels. Mm. Now, this week. 12 jurors were selected, as well as six alternates. It took them over four days, and there was people who got left and people who were afraid because Trump is still trying to intimidate uh, witnesses and jurors, and some people left. But they finally have a full, a full jury, uh, and we anticipate that they're going to start opening statements as early as Monday. Now, in a hearing this afternoon, Trump's attorneys argued against allowing prosecutors to question the former president about his past legal issues mm. if he testifies. Now, this would include the $3,355 million uh, civil fraud judgment and the E. Jean Carroll defamation case. The judge said that he was going to let them all know his decision on Monday. Now, mm. Trump also told reporters that he was going to testify during this trial which he hasn't done in any of the other cases. So this stands to be a very entertaining trial. And as I love to say, more should be revealed and we will keep you up to date. <laughs> I just want to see it because I, I thought about that. I said, Lord, if they just, if I lived in New York and I got selected for jury duty to come in just to tell him what I feel so that they could tell me to get out the courtroom. I would just love to do it. I, I just need that one moment to roast his his orange self. And so, yeah, I it's going to be a farce. I am not now, trying to be funny, but when you say roast, it made me think of an actual event that happened today. I don't know if you guys heard, but earlier today, someone literally set themselves on fire. Yes, I was. Literally. You know, outside uh, of the court right they don't really know why this person did it or at least that's not what the reporting is saying now we know mm -hmm. that someone uh who was pro-palestine actually set themselves on fire a few weeks ago right. so i don't know if this is a repeat if this is connected to some of the other things that are going on uh in new york city around all that's happening in the middle east but uh look there was actually a uh, a conservative blogger who was posting things, telling people, if you can fake your way and get onto this trial, just so you can say that you won't convict him to hold up, uh, you know, the case and have it be declared a mistrial, you would be doing your American duty. So there's a lot riding on this. It's a lot. There's a lot it's riding a lot. on it's this. A case. Lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. But yeah. Oh, wow. Well, well okay. in keeping with the political <laughs> tone, some of you may be aware that uh, former President Robert F. Kennedy, his son, RFK Jr., is actually trying to bid uh, as president as well, trying his put throw his hat in the ring to be president as well. Unfortunately for Robert uh, Kennedy Jr., he, the Biden, President Biden has just been endorsed by 12 members or more of the Kennedy family. His own family has decided to support Joe Biden. And part of their support is around this whole threat of a third party challenge. They're very concerned about the possibility of Robert F. Kennedy's votes, siphoning off votes from Biden, thus putting Trump in into office. Uh, they're also very concerned about some of the stances that he has taken and uh, conspiracy theories and all kinds of things that he said. And actually, his sister was interviewed the other day 
And she actually cited that she felt that his election would literally be a danger to America, just as she felt the same about the other candidate. And so it begs the question that, as someone said, we can be in the same family and be a very, very different political stance and views and positions. And this one is very, very, I mean, the legacy of the Kennedy family is, I've always believed to be the closest thing we have to a royal family in this in this society. They've been deemed as kind of like the Camelot family. So for Joe Biden to get the endorsement of the Kennedy family when one of their own is running is a, a huge slap in the face of RFK Jr. What do you guys think? I think it's pretty eye opening. I, I just I'm and I'm glad that it's moving in this direction. You know what I'm saying? He needs Joe Biden needs an endorsement like that from, you know, a prominent uh, 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 Democratic, Absolutely. Uh, you know, family or matriarch or however you want to yeah. categorize them. He need he needs that. And it's he is deserving. I mean, considering what, what, who he's running against, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just standing from that who yeah. he's running against. He needs an endorsement like that. I'm just going to remind everyone that the last time a candidate's family said that person's dangerous, don't put them in office, white people voted them in office. So just be aware that that could not work in everyone's best interest. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it feels good, as the song says. It does. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Tony. Tony. He said, he said, he said. Tony, Tony, Tony. <laughs> Are we the same group? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those, oh, let me see, we, some folks are weighing in on that. Uh, let me see who, I, I, I had to go down. Uh, Blue says we need a, we need to, we need members to open, opening endorsed by True and Gregory Booth. I'm, I'm tired that our only options for president are sheltered rich white men in the sunset of their lives. <laughs> Come on, Gregory. How can they represent our diverse country when they are so out of touch? Come and on, Gregory. Gregory. Come on. Gregory, Gregory is a write-in candidate for president. <laughs> I just want to let you all know. Uh, he is Gregory with a G-R-E-G-R-Y. <laughs> Where's Gregory's plate? Because I need to pass it, OK? <laughs> But yeah. Gregory Booth, B O O M. Gregory Booth. Yes. You said that. You said that, Gregory. <laughs> no, true. Um, that is, you couldn't have. I couldn't have said it any better. Okay. Yeah. I, I, the um, reality is, our options are not hmm. reflective of the demographic of our nation by any stretch of the imagination. By, by any stretch of the imagination. Well, I wanted to, um, you know, to close out some of the news headlines that this is this is a pretty horrible story but I, I wanted to share this uh with you all because i don't know if you knew about it but learn something um on march the 25th ladies and gentlemen a a retiree uh has been arrested in clark county ohio after he allegedly shot dead an uber driver mm -hmm. who had unwittingly been hired to collect cash uh, from him as part of a scam. William Brock, who's 81, shot Lolita Hall several times when she appeared at his home in Ohio last month after he believed she was part of an extortion attempt. Um, and according to the investigators, uh, Brock had earlier received a scam call about an incarcerated relative which had involved threats and demanded money from him. And um, over the phone, they also told him that they wanted him to pay $12,000. And in the process of all that, the same caller called or an accomplice called and hired Hall using the Uber app to pick up a package from Brock's residence, according to the investigation. And if I, this was one of the saddest stories, and I've heard some, a lot of sad stories this, this week. But the picture that was taken from a camera of him holding that gun to her while she was, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure she was saying, hey, look, it's not me. It's not me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It is, it is heart wrenching. Mm -hmm. And I just want to tell if any of you are driving or let, let, let me start with that, because that's the premise for where we are with this. 
be careful if you are driving Uber or Lyft and all that. And I don't know how they can protect you from that because that was a pretty legal, I guess, I don't want to say legal, but why would she have reason to question that is what I'm saying. I don't. So it's an interesting concept of sending people and I don't use Uber that often, but the, the whole concept of sending someone in an Uber to pick up a package to, to, to be delivered back to you. I, I don't think it's I don't think it's so suspicious that someone would think I'm in danger, but I do know that people are using Uber in that way, like to, to, as a as a transport service for something that they need to go back and forth. I as you were saying, Alvin, that picture is really just heart wrenching because what we now know is that these were the last moments of this woman's life. And you can see that the terror in her face, this man has got this gun and she has no idea why he has a gun on her and right. assuming that she is a part of this scam group. And all she was doing is going to go pick up a package. She was told to go pick a package. And it, it is such a horrific end of her life around something that she had literally nothing to do with. I would just like to say, what a difference a wig makes. Oh. Did you say a wig? Yes, because he's talking about her headshot. picture. Usually headshots of black people are not very good, but she actually looked really good. <laughs> that was her Uber shot. I'm going to pray for you. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. Pray. You know what? <laughs> oh, the shade of showing it. But look, she looks so much. She I looks am really going cute. To pray. She I was, she what, was scared. She was scared. I don't scared. know what going to do, but I'm going to. But, 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 okay. But you know what? My, I, I kind of feel. The shade that I am getting from this. <laughs> crap. You said the level of shade. You're lucky you get lightning has not come okay. and stricken you. <laughs> It should be dark in your room right now. Exactly. Okay, the shade that's coming from that room right there. Um, no, I mean the 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 senior citizen Brock. I know he shot her, but I and I, I kind of feel for him because he was scared. Yeah, he was. You know, he was hoodwinked and 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 he didn't know. So it's a sad story, no no matter how. But um, yeah, th those are those are our top stories, and I just want to don't no feed in the Bosch. Gregory, Gregory, Gregory. <laughs> He went, he, went from, he went from being up at the top with this profound statement to feeding Bosch. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Well, look, we talked earlier about gays having kids, and I just want to uh, be the one that represents us as we announce that Brittany Griner and her wife, Sherelle, are expecting a child, their very first child. Now, the couple got married in June of 2019, and they shared the news through a joint Instagram post on Saturday, April 13th. And in the photo, it's so cute. It's them holding hands with, like, ultrasounds pictures of the child and it just melts my heart. I, I'm so happy for them considering all that they've been through in terms of uh, Brittany's incarceration in Russia, et cetera. Sherelle wrote uh, on the post, can't believe we're less than three months away from meeting our favorite new human being. She also shared that the child is gonna be born in July, which will make it a cancer, hello. <laughs> by using the hashtags baby grinder coming soon and hashtag July, 2024. So congratulations, as we always say, we're gonna keep you guys up to date. And as soon as we have pictures of this child or anything else about this announcement, we'll let you know. What do you guys think of this? That is That's a hot news. couple. That's a hot couple. That, I, you know, I got, to, I got to give credit where it's due. That's yeah. a hot couple. And I'm just yeah. gonna leave it, boom, put that mic right there. That's look. Yeah, they're beautiful. You now you guys know that they've known each other for so many years. Beautiful uh, couple. When they went to college, but they didn't date until just really a few years ago. Wow. So Destiny has a way of bringing people together. And such hey, a girl. happy moment for a family that's been through such an yeah. extraordinary exactly. public deal. So exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. She said, "Look, if you ever go out of state, we go. I need to have a kid." Because look, because you you don't know how to act when you go out of the country, Brittany. So, so. <laughs> well, we're gonna stay on that happy train, and we're gonna shout out two <laughs> freshmen, Jared McCain. Jared McCain is a freshman on the Duke basketball team, and at a time when you know we see a whole lot of ex examples of toxic masculinity, we want to shout out Jared McCain. Jared, who loves to wear nail polish, 
has actually signed an NIL deal. You know, that's the deal where uh, uh, college athletes can actually earn profits from the use of their image, et cetera, et cetera. He's actually signed a deal with American beauty brand, Sally Hansen. Everybody knows now. Sally Hansen. Okay. So we wanted to, I mean, this do Blue Devils star guard regularly wears nail polish as a fashion statement and has worked to destigmatize the whole notion of the practice of men wearing nail polish. And I just want to shout out Jared, because I just think, you know, I'm one of, I'm, I'm a little old school when it comes to certain things. And I must admit, it took me a minute to get used to seeing young men with nail polish on. But then I've started seeing them really rock it with different outfits and really, and I'm like, it's nail color. Like, why do we have such an issue around it? So I just want to shout out Jared and say, way to go, Jared, for working to destigmatize our notions about expressing ourselves through a, the color of our nails. Yeah. I Do you guys polish your nails, either finger or toe? I do not. I, I do not. I do not. Mm -mm. I and, do. and only for the reason I don't have time. You know, I you know I got the I, I just don't have time. But I'm sure if if I did it, it wouldn't be an issue. But I've never done it. Mm -mm. No, you don't get mani pedis. I do, but I, I get I get, I, I get buffed, so they yeah, shine. I, get buffed I just too. get them buffed, so it just shines. Yeah, no, there's nothing buff about you. <laughs> mm -mm. <clears throat> Sorry. I hate when my with my allergies flare. And <laughs> yes, flare. and that was an I incredible hate. sneeze. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hey, hate, Keith. I hate it. <laughs> hey, Keith. How you doing? I hate when that happens. I hate. No, but I like. I tend to like the 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 nice shine of, of the nails naturally. Uh huh. And blah. But I would if I did a color because I've seen some really cool kind of like neutral colors out there. Mm -hmm. But I would, but but no, I, I, I've never. But I've had enough conversations with people, you know, like people who have said, you know, Alvin, oh, yes, people who have issues with guys who paint their nails, and I've had conversations with people wondering what's the story behind it, and you know, my my favorite comeback to them is. Google, go go to Google. Don't don't ask me. I don't know. I don't. I have no idea what the history is behind it. But go to Google um, because I don't know. But my at the end of the day, if it feels good to you, do it. Absolutely. Be you because Jared now has a six figure deal with Sally Hansen. So, <laughs> in addition to playing college basketball, y'all sit down because he's laughing all the way to his. To the bank, to his manicurist for to sure. To his manicure, bam, mm -hmm. bam. There you bank. go. There you go. Bank. Yeah. So that's that. Bank. That's that. Mm -hmm. Bank, bank. Okay. Well, so, but... would you? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm I'm just loading today, and I'm sorry. I'm, I've got two stories here, and I I'm, I apologize for that. But um, Travis Kelsey, Travis Kelsey, guys. Everybody knows him as Taylor Swift's boyfriend right now, I guess, you know, in addition to being an NFL player for the Kansas City Chiefs. But, can't, but he and his brother recently received honorary degrees. And when it's not so much that they got the honorary degrees as much as what happened when they got the honorary degrees. Travis literally, as he was receiving, about to receive his diploma, came up from his robe chugged a beer, chugged it, and then took the beer and slammed it down on the stage, took the diploma, held it up over his head, and just, um, I guess there's, there's, there's feedback and pushback as to whether or not this behavior was one, appropriate, and two, an example of privilege in the fact that there have been a number of high profile situations where students of color have been reprimanded for just expressing themselves through like a dance or a handshake or a move and certainly nothing as um, arguably inappropriate as chugging down a beer and slamming down the can. Was it indeed the act of privilege that I certainly felt that it was? What do you guys think? I, I think it was uncouth. I mean, I think 
his getting a pass, although he is not completely, there have been a lot of people who have said that that was completely inappropriate. Mm -hmm. But I think his thought that he could get away with it and do it was sort of privilegy, but it was also just generally uncouth. Yeah. Like, I, I want to look at his parents and see how he was raised, because that should never have crossed his consciousness. Do you think it was disrespectful I, to his classmates? Absolutely. His classmates. Absolutely. And the absolutely. school. And, and the, the, and the mm -hmm. institution, higher yep. education, mm -hmm. people getting their loan, student loans bought back. It was, a, you know, it was it was uncool to everything having to do with higher education, in my opinion. And especially if you look at or follow the history, just over the last two or three years of at graduations, how they put restrictions on you can't scream out, you can't, you know, because you know, we, don't we're, clap we're, until everybody's you, done. Right. Um, don't come across the stage and do some crazy dance or whatever. Yet you're going to get on stage and allow and and the faculty are laughing at you. They're, they're like kind of endorsing the foolery. And so I'm kind of like, um, yeah, that that's that's some white privilege showing out right there. And he needs to be, you know, reprimanded. What was that Maurice said? Maurice said, uh, and then Taylor Swift is about to write a song about leaving him. <laughs> <laughs> That's wait, wait a minute, Z, Z Stout said, oh, the, our special guest, he, he weighed in. He said he didn't have to work for it. And don't forget the Columbia POC that can't give a speech because of her political views. Yeah. Exactly. The person of color. Yeah, she's a young Muslim woman uh, who's, who's uh, val she's valedictorian of her class, her college class. Right. And, and they've canceled her actually giving her, her speech, her speech at the uh, ceremony. Right. Well, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, that comment came from our special guest. And and and, and look, he's back there. So you, we, I love it. I got, we got one more story before we bring him on. We need to get him on here. But before we do that, <laughs> <laughs> we we have to let y'all know not not everything is going you know uh, crazy in the LGBTQIA plus community. The people are being celebrated, and this uh. Last week was no exception to that. Um, the GLAD Media Awards were handed out last week at the Beverly Hilton in Beverly Hills. Uh, the show was hosted by actor comedian Wayne Brady, and the show bottoms RuPaul's Drag Race, Ted Lasso, and Renee Rapp took home the top prizes at, at the at the awards, which uh, celebrated its 35th year, ladies and gentlemen. And you know. The queen of talk shows, Oprah Winfrey, received the Vanguard Award, which was introduced by the iconic Chicago um, drag performer Chili Pepper and celebrity host uh, Paolo Presta. And TV star Nisi Nash, who, baby, I don't know who's making the bodices of her gowns, but they're doing a darn good job, received the Stephen F. Kozak Award presented by Sharon Stone. Um, again, the GLAAD Awards, it is highly recognized. And I just wanted to bring something nice that's happening in our community where people are, you know, being recognized for just being who they are. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Amen. Yeah. All right. All right. So um, I, I really meant that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I, I I have to say, I love me some Zaylor Stout, okay? And Zaylor is back with us. He's been here before, um, but he has something very important that he wants to talk to us about, you know, about, as I mentioned earlier in the show, that, that's taking place uh, in the, um, and affecting the LGBTQIA plus community. So if you all are ready, can I go ahead and introduce uh, Z, Zaylor, get him in? Absolutely. We're on a first name basis now. I call him Z now yeah. and stuff like first that. First initial, just, just like the letter. Just, just, just like the letter? Oh, and <laughs> look, and tonight is RuPaul's Drag Race, but Q is not on there. I don't know why I had to say that. Okay, I don't know why I had to say that. But anyway, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Zaylor Stout serves as a fierce advocate on LGBTQIA plus issues. Through his law firm, Zaylor Stout and Associates, he has represented HIV uh, plus and transgender employees who were discriminated against at work. He also works with employers to help them foster inclusive workplaces on a proactive basis. Zaylor volunteers through the LGBTQ Law Clinic and serves on the board of Reclaim, an LG and LGBTQIA plus nonprofit and quorum. The Minnesota LGBTQIA plus allied, allied 
Chamber of Commerce as well. He also ran for city council in St. In St. Louis Park, where he championed the call for the passage of a gender inclusive policy to protect transgender and gender non-conforming youth in schools. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Zaylor Stout back to our stage, please. Hello, hello. Hey, Z. <laughs> welcome back, my friend. Welcome, welcome back. And thank you for chiming in. That, that's the first time a guest who was backstage chiming in. Actually, listen to the show. Man. Like, let me get on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's audience participation at its best. Absolutely, yes. as it should be. Well, yes. well, thank you. I, I also know, ladies and gentlemen, we, we do a lot of talking behind the scenes. We have an excellent, we have two producers that are just excellent. And and Z, you said something uh, in our chat backstage that you wanted to talk about when you came on before we got into our discussion. Um, you want to share that with us? Absolutely. Well, I love hearing the discussion you're having as it relates to LGBTQI plus parents, right? And so what I've, what I've tracked in regards to my research on this topic is um, the aspect and the element of that queer parents have to actually work to become parents, right? They don't ask, you don't accidentally, there's no oops situation where you become a parent. You actually have to go through the process of IVF, where you have to go through the process of surrogacy, where you have to go through the process of adoption. And so the data that I found has been that, you know, parents have been that have been raised by LGBTQI plus parents um, are happier, right? And part of it is because this, I, I think um, an easy way to be able to address it and analyze this is that you can't accidentally become a parent, right? And you actually have to work it and you have to put money into it. And so folks are more invested in regards to parenthood, I think as it relates to that, as opposed to folks that can, you know, have a one night stand and the next thing you know, the, the, the test is coming out positive as it relates to them being, being becoming parents. And and so that's just my little my, my little addendum and take on that. Well, you know, I appreciate it. Look, I'm passing the plate for Z too now, okay? Because he knows what he knows, okay? And it was he said, no, he that said, he said he said. No, but that, that 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 was a great point. So thank you, thank you for weighing in on that because that was a moment where you know um, I, I really had to stand my ground, and mm -hmm. in a way that I didn't want to push my family member away or go go really in on him, but the right. universe put it out there where I had ammunition. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. So nice. he got my point. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Well, we were, go ahead, I'm sorry, what were you gonna say? Oh, no, no, no. I was oh, just okay. saying that, that I'm, I'm glad you have the strength to be able to hold it together because sometimes we just can't. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I wanted to rip my wig off my head and just go, but I didn't do it. I didn't do it. You I had one did. on? I did that day. Oh, it's called a scary. scully. Don't go there with me, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zaylor, in the last two years, there have been an explosion of anti-LGBTQI legislation introduced across the United States. Right. And a huge focus of that has been on trying to deny gender affirming care. Mm -hmm. So as lots of LGBTQI nonprofits are trying to recover from financial uh, lack of donations during COVID, there's a group called the National Center for Public Policy Research that has been trying to get major companies to interfere with their employees' donations to some of these essential nonprofits that are trying to provide life saving care to vulnerable members of our community, like the Trevor Project, which is uh, an anti-suicide uh, crisis intervention organization, and SAGE, which advocates on behalf of LGBTQI elders, and GLAD, which is an LGBTQI media advocacy group. They're even trying to ban books that educate the world on the contributions made by our LGBTQI ancestors. We welcome you here to talk about this. Can you start off by telling us who is or what is this National Center for Public Policy? Well, it's an organization that is funded by conservative think tanks. And what they do is they try to go against woke corporations. And what that means is, is that they represent the interests of some shareholders. Um, there has to be a minimum number of shareholders or percentage of shares that they own. A lot of those end up being um, things like uh, mutual funds and things of that nature. And so what they do is, and they approach these companies and say, well, we've dug into because this has to be publicly available because they're publicly traded companies. You know, what have you supported with your phil 
philanthropic dollars, right? And so they're always looking and digging for LGBTQI plus stuff and then coming against those organizations and saying things like, we're going to make a splash at the next shareholders meeting unless you correspond with and comply with our demands, right? And uh, under the particular scenario that you're referencing, you know, some of those demands are crazy things like, you know, don't support organizations that have, that that support the mutilization of minors, right? And so, uh, strangely enough, I think, and I'm not hopefully I'm not giving them any tips in regards how to address this, but you know they use such crazy inflammatory language that the organizations giving already complies with and addresses that they're not giving money to those types of organizations. Mm -hmm. And so, strangely enough, you know my book ended up on the list next to. GLAD and the Trevor Project and things of that nature that um, Best Buy supported in 2019. And so it was interesting that they were pushing to, you know, get them to not support things like the Trevor Project, which has absolutely nothing to do but saving queer kids' lives, mm -hmm. right? Um, HRC was on the list, and but one of the things that they said from their perspective was, well, you know, HRC is very politically, uh, you know, um, strong nationally, and we can't expect for Best Buy to, you know, not support HRC. They, they have too much political strength and capital. But, you know, how about you not support our gay history in 50 states and then you not support, you know, the Trevor Project? So I, I, I'm pretty sure for the first time, a, a, a queer history book uh, showed up in an SEC filing <laughs> where it's available for anybody to read and have access to. So and accessible by uh, YouTube. We are sharing a link in case anyone would like to buy your book and they should support you. Yes, 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 we are. Yes, we are. Thank you. That that was a mouthful. It's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. It's a lot. I'm so Zaylor, okay. is it is it an attempt then to utilize uh, intimidation, I think, to really kind of scare people away from certain things? And can you distinguish for me Mm -hmm. What some people may argue, the difference between this tactic and people's response when, say, for instance, other people support organizations that don't, um, like, say, for instance, a hate, like, say, for instance, when Chick-fil-A had decided, you know, that they, that, that being gay was, uh, was an issue and people stopped supporting them or when people said that Home Depot uh, didn't support people of color, all kinds of things and people you know, were uh, persuaded to not necessarily support them. Can you distinguish that difference? Absolutely. And 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 the interesting thing is, is really this is uh, over the last two years, this is the second, second Minnesota based headquartered multinational organization that's been that's been attacked. So think about Target. Remember, Target had this whole thing where, you know, they removed the pride displays at some stores or they moved the prize displays to the back. And then there was this whole, you know, hoopla in regards to, you know, whether Target doesn't support the community anymore, mm -hmm. right? And my whole thing is, as an attorney and somebody that does investigations, you know, what's reported out in the press isn't necessarily always what the truth is, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, I haven't had a chance, unfortunately, fingers crossed, maybe somebody at Target's listening in, right? Been able to dig into the details internally in regards to what, the, what decisions were made and why those decisions were made at Target. But the example that I think as an employment lawyer is, Let's say somebody crazy came over and said that they were going to bomb targets that had pride displays and they were in Kansas City. So then pride chooses to remove those pride displays there because it's just too hot, too, too much of a hot topic, hot button issue. And I already know that Target doesn't have pride displays in every location across the country. So they already have identified certain um, locations that have a either a, a larger percentage of queer folks there or there's an interest in regards to it. So I already know that they're not in the most conservative spaces uh, across the country. But let's say Target, that that was a scenario and Target then removes the displays, however, still allows to be able to purchase those items online. What the public is told is that Target doesn't support gay folks anymore. Right. Even though what they were doing was trying to protect the lives and the livelihood of those folks that lived in that community where that particular threat was. So I always take those types of great things as a grain of with a grain of salt. And the exact same thing ended up being the case with in regards to this Best Buy situation. What was reported out was that Best Buy changed that they what they were doing and these emails are 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 you know publicly available. Well, I read all of those emails. 
and 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 they didn't agree to anything that that didn't indicate that they weren't supporting the community anymore. You know, um, my my book stuff that they supported me was a one time thing in 2019, and they, yet they're trying to have them, you know, demand that they provide proof that they're not supporting my book anymore. Well, it was a one time thing, right? Uh, and they're and they're ready to support my Black History book when it when when that one comes out, right? So, you know, that's the thing is that, I mean, number one, I think they just got lawyered under this circumstance that they thought that they were getting something that they weren't, they weren't getting. But then to broaden back out, Bobby, in regards to your question is there's a difference between individuals going out and boycotting organizations that they don't support, mm -hmm. right? So that, that reminds me of the Chick-fil-A or the Hobby Lobby and things of that nature, where you have folks that are really cognizant of, of, of LGBT and QI plus issues and don't want to provide money that supports organizations that are giving money towards uh, folks that are buying against our interests, right? But there's a difference between that and using the corporate structure and and the stock shareholder kind of analysis and assessment in regards to then leveraging that strength internally within the organization to make those to, to force them to make those types of decisions right and that's where i think the difference is one is you know more populist and the other one is really taking a very strategic strategy and this is one of the things that i think is challenging with um, you know, the, the liberal wing of our party is that we don't spend a lot of money in regards to supporting think tanks that come up with these strategies and these ideas. The conservatives sure as hell do. Mm -hmm. And so then you have organizations like this that are doing these types of things, trying to trying to make a difference. But let me tell you, Best Buy supporting us more than ever, right? So I'm, I'm involved, I'm the DI advisor to Twin Cities Pride, and they were already supporting Pride, and they're supporting Pride even more after this. So Best Buy is still there. They still support us. They're not changing anything that they're doing. Um, and so if there are LGBTQI plus organizations out there, there's a grant program in regards to stuff, um, in regards to, they really like supporting, you know, education and using technology for education. So if you're involved in regard to any of that, submit those, submit those grant money. The, those grant requests, because there's money there for you. Lovely. Well, please let me know because I have a talk show that I would love to put have Best Buy to support. So I'm just going to take you that, right? and, and it, and we're, we're a resource to the world. Um, <laughs> Z, I want to first. What keeps coming up in my head is: is this legal for an employee to screen or prevent an employee from donating to charities of their choice? Well, here's the thing. It absolutely is legal because, again, they're supporting um, a, a conglomerate of shareholders. And I don't remember off the top of my head if it's a certain number of shares or a percentage of shares. Right. And so their whole thing is shareholders are focused about bottom line, about providing, you know, the highest capital possible, the highest revenue possible so that dividends can be paid out. And so their position is, you know, why are you giving money out in regards to these situations and these circumstances? Right. And if the economy gets tough, then it's like, you know, why are you spending money on these ancillary things when you should be focusing and spending your money on X, Y or Z? And so it is absolutely legal. Right. But the thing is, is like, you know, I, I, I don't recall there being situations and or circumstances where um, they're really using and leveraging this type of, you know, brute strength. Uh, at the shareholders um, kind of level and and to and to present at a shareholders meeting uh, in regards to some of these social issues, right? Because it's really not a ton of money that they're paying out as it relates to everything else. Think about organizations like and, and corporations like this too, right? They get tax write-offs by donating to, uh, to, to nonprofit organizations and things like that. So a lot of them have foundations where they're giving money out to these different aspects and areas. And so, um, you know, their whole thing is, you know, how, how does this support the education of folks within your demographic or the community? And so they just don't want it going towards LGBT organizations. And they're going to continue to push this, this aspect and this, um, this tactic against like, the organizations likely. And who knows if the others are going to be as strong as Best Buy has been in regards to, you know, fighting against it. Wow. So have you experienced, cause you're in the article, your book, you are, li are listed in it. <laughs> have you experienced any fallout or any effects from this? I haven't. And strangely enough, um, it doesn't seem like the, the reporting actually caught much much wind but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's not something that would have could happen later on you know sometimes you have reporting that happens and then for some reason two three years later it catches wind and then there you go um but um no i, I actually haven't and again you know 
they, the focus was for them to support me in regards to when my first book came out. And they were the first corporation to sponsor my book for a state, which means they bought 150 copies of my book that got donated to LGBT nonprofits that work with kids. Nice. And so, you know, they they were they were fired up about being the very first. And the fact that I'm here in Minneapolis, Minnesota was very impactful and important for me as well. So, um, yeah, no, it's it's it, it, it there hasn't been any fall fallout or blowback. I mean, my, my book's already on the band list, so who cares? <laughs> <laughs> well, we what still it, want people to buy it. So absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yes. Yes. You, you need to have it. Yes. Well, one of the things we take very seriously is trying to provide our listeners with tangible ways to to be activists and to be able to respond to various things. So I want to ask you whether it's on a larger scale or even in the place of a particular place of employment, if it's their own place of employment, how does the everyday person kind of counter, you know, the these types of um, actions against them? Well, I'd say, I mean, say, stay, say, stay read up and informed in regards to what's going on. Um, you know, there's, there's always, there's so many different ways that folks can be involved. And a lot of people think that they, you know, if they're not at a parade or they're not at the legislature, then, then, then there's nothing for them to do right? There's lots of things that they can do. So for example, you know, they can go to their school boards, their local school board. And when people are fighting about not providing gender inclusion policies there for there to be kind of a, a structural way for them to address um, and handle scenarios where students are uh, either transgender, gender non-conforming, as opposed to teaching, treating each one that comes up as like a guinea pig, right? Having an actual policy and procedure in place and proper training for the staff at the schools. More often than not, the teachers want to be trained in regards to how to do this right and how to support the kids. But there's nobody there that has the expertise in regards to it. Mm -hmm. and, and then the schools aren't provided the resources to be able to make that happen as well. So they can, you can go to your school board meeting and make an impact from that from that standpoint, especially now for some reason, because everybody's all of a sudden concerned about what kids are reading and stuff like that. And now they're going over trying to ban books and 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 things. You know, you can make a big difference by even lending your voice and showing up to those school board meetings and saying, no, not everybody in this community is against people having access to stuff and parents having access to books to be able to provide to their kids. Um, but you can also do things like, you know, buy a copy of my book and have it on your coffee table so that when family members come over, you can have a discussion that just, I just got a text from a friend where, you know, they had their boyfriend over and they, and they thought they were going to get some, but the, but the boyfriend was so enthralled with my book that he couldn't put it down. You know what? You know what? You know what? <laughs> but 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 being the family show we are, we're not we're we're we're, we're not going to go there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I know what y'all talk about sometimes on the show. So you know tell, tell me what, Zaylor? What are you talking about? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Huh? You can also buy a copy. You can also buy a copy of the book and and donate it to your local library or your yeah. local high school. Where there where you know there are queer kids where they can have access to. And the thing that I love about the book, little quick little thingy. The reason why it highlights and uplifts the story of queer folks in each and every single state is because more often than not, LGBTQI plus folks, especially if they live in conservative areas, feel as though that they have to leave in order to be able to be in a community surrounded by folks that support and love them and that the laws are on their side, right? I wanted to be able to show those folks in Oklahoma City or in, in rural Iowa or Idaho or in North or South Dakota that there is history that comes from our community that are from their state. And if they stay there, they can become history makers themselves, right? And so that was that was an important thing for me because we've heard stories about Chicago and New York and Miami and Florida and all that kind of stuff. But you don't always hear about, you know, Des Moines, Iowa, right? Or all these things. And so it was important for me that folks were able to connect with stories that they could identify with because it's from folks within their community and maybe even folks that, that their families knew. Well, I'm going to tell all of you, please get the book. Um, I have it in my living room, so it hasn't really kept things from happening in any other places of my house. But it is a beautiful book. Get it. Uh, it here's the web, the link right here. Order the book. You will be glad you did. Zaylor, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for coming on with us again tonight. It is always a, a pleasure to have you here and you know outdoors are open here and he said he said he said and you can Absolutely. come back anytime just know that just know that 
I'm okay. sure you'll want to have me back once we get some of those Supreme Court decisions out, right? So oh. that's a legal expert. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, thank you to all the viewers. JJ, I know you said hello to all of us. Thank you for all the comments. And Gregory Booth, thank you. And Blue and Rodney and Monica. How are you guys doing? Herbert and all of you hey, here Monica. tonight. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, we're going to leave here with these words of the week that were provided by our poet, Bobby. Uh, even if you cannot change all the people around you, you can change the people you choose to be around. Life is too short to waste your time on people who don't respect, appreciate, and value you. Spend your life with people who make you smile, laugh, and feel good, even when you have 50 gay states of uh, the uh, Zoe's book in your living room. You make sure that you do that. You make sure that you do that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for joining us tonight. And you all have a wonderful weekend. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of He Said. He Said. He Said. And, and he, he said, said tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You <laughs> have a good weekend, everybody. <laughs> for everybody. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. <laughs>